Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some drafting tips to help you guys improve trying to get towards Masters ranks. Going to show you guys all forms of ELO and even some competitive gameplay as well. So these are just some tips to help you get better. But if you want to see a real in-depth drafting guide, then make sure to smash the like button. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So to begin with, we're going to be taking a look at diamond level drafting in ranked, just to give you guys an idea if some of you guys are stuck in diamond. But straight away, you want to be taking a look at the coin flip. You can see on the left-hand side, you've got this blue coin. That means that we have first pick. So in terms of brawlers that you want to ban, you want to leave alone the best brawlers for the map, especially if you're first pick. It probably changes if your teammate has first pick, probably still ban some of the best brawlers in the game. But if you have first pick yourself, don't be banning like Angelo, don't be banning like Melody, etc. This is on my mini account, so I don't have many of those brawlers maxed out. But instead, I will be picking a really good, strong first pick anyways with Piper. Piper is just a really good carry brawler. In safe zone, for example, you want to just be command in the middle as much as possible. So brawlers like Piper, Bell are going to be really strong there. So in terms of my uh, banning as well, I banned Edgar just because you want to, in Heist in particular, you want to be banning brawlers that are just really annoying about just constantly get uh, aggression. So brawlers like Edgar, Jesse, Colt, that can just get free damage. You want to turn this into as little as a base race as possible, especially against worse players. If you think you're much better than them, you don't want to be giving them Jesse and Nita where they could just keep recycling deaths over and over again and getting constant damage on the safe. So you can't really control what your teammates go with. At the end of the day, in Diamond, they'll just go whatever you can. So you just got to make of that what you will. And you could just got to try and carry. So in terms of draft, our draft is absolutely terrible. But I know that I've got a good matchup against Colt and Crow. They've drafted just as worse. So it's just about how I adapt in game. So the match itself went pretty plain sailing. I know, of course, that a lot of the time it is just because of the skill. But I feel like anyone could have won with this draft. Mainly because it only takes two taps to literally kill the entire team except for Leon. But Leon is terrible in heist. So their draft was just absolutely terrible. The throwers were pretty toxic. It was pretty hard to maintain control a lot of their game but i just knew if i focused on the safe that's what you gotta do don't just suicide for the safe but focus on the safe chip it down keep using your gadgets to confirm kills and i knew that i was going to win this one so you can see by the stats at the end we absolutely carried but at the same time the opponents were so bad that the draft didn't even really matter in this scenario so moving on to the second example here in minecart madness gem grab we have no modifiers so we know the meta is not going to be changing too much so in terms of the coin flip we see straight away surgical he's going to ban angelo and i'm going to ban Melody, the reason being Angelo is just insane in most people's hands. Melody, you might not want to ban this low down and elo towards Diamond because it does take a lot of skill to use it. But at the same time, it's so cheesy. Just get a couple of shots and just tap your gadgets. Now, I'm looking for brawlers that can do decent into Fang. I haven't got many options on my free-to-play account. A lot of them get countered by Fang. So it's about knowing your matchups. And Stu has a pretty good matchup into most things, especially tanks. Like, you can always build your super up for free. It's going to be hard for Fang to connect supers onto me. And I can get pressure myself through charging a lot of supers off the fang so i know i can go stew i'm looking for suggestions for my other teammate but he just picks spike you know sometimes you just they don't give yourself enough time to suggest so you've just got to make of it and you've just got to move on and try and draft as much as possible to give yourself a good chance so they go lou which is a terrible choice from them lou is only good into tanks or in hot zone especially in this meta so again that's just some poor drafting you don't want to draft tanks early you don't want to draft lou anywhere outside of hot zone right now so we know straight away these guys don't really know the meta i'm trying to suggest uh surgical to go jesse because it's a good mid against fang they go with a crow as well so they've got no designated mid we've got spike that has a good matchup into crow and all of these jesse's got a good matchup into all of these as well you want to go a gem carrier that's not too vulnerable against tanks and jesse's your best option here so let's see if we can apply this great draft so not only do you have to draft well you also have to play the draft well so knowing your matchups straight away we know every single time that spike counters crow and i have a decent matchup against fang and lou in particular i definitely don't want to go on a crow crow can keep his distance and of course he can kind of remove the healing from my gas hill stop house so stay away from crow use my jukes to avoid lou because lou's shots are so hard to hit and the same with fang shu as well it's really hard to hit a dash and stew so i know i can just get so much pressure just waste their time as much as possible with stew and this is exactly what i did it just allowed uh, the jesse and the spike to get some good shots off as well so a good draft will win your games but at the same time you've got to apply it pretty well so in terms of the end game stats we did pretty decent we got some good damage at the end of the game and we've got star players so just going to show that 
a good draft doesn't always of course correlate into wins but in this case i feel like it did so now we're moving on to mythic level gameplay and drafting here so again i feel like a lot of people in mythic just don't really have a, like a max out account which is fair enough so you've got to take that into consideration when you're drafting you can't always pick the best counters the best matchups whatever else so a lot of times you do just have to look towards your higher power 11 brawlers but if you want to find out the best brawlers to max out you've got to check out my videos on my channel but anyways in terms of the draft then they had first picks we want to be buying angelo and melody pretty much every single time especially on hot zone melody can get so much pressure so straight away i'm not really focusing too much on draft right now because i'm waiting for to see what they pick so I, I can have a good response to that so they go with a surge so this is what i mean i'm in, I'm in mythic and they're picking brawlers like surge so you know with surge straight away that tanks are terrible against uh, surge so you don't want to pick any tanks but the best way to counter a surge is through outranging him not feeding him the levels keeping your distance playing patience patient and making sure you're pinching so i go with the bell to keep my distance i know it's sick beats and my gadget doesn't work but it doesn't matter hypercharge bell is good against everything and then um, my teammate goes with a colt which actually isn't the worst matchup because at least you can keep your distance with colt break open walls and you know making the map as open as possible is going to counter surge so they go with larry and laurie I know straight away that Jesse isn't really going to be the best option against this because it is a thrower, but still Jesse's going to be good against Pearl, good against Surge. It's not the end of the world. It's hot zone as well. You can never go wrong with Jesse hype charge. So two Jesse picks right here, which is pretty decent. Let's see how the draft does in game. So the draft went to plan and the gameplay was perfectly executed. It probably was thrown by their Surge just first picking it. You never want to first pick a brawler like Surge, but at the same time we played it pretty well. We were pinching really well. Colt with the wall breaks really helps further the pinches. The only thing we struggled with was early game because they just got so much pressure and it took a lot of pinching to get them out but you can see by the end game stats as well we were just playing passive and making sure to get the pinches off and we just absolutely wrecked them so another great draft it's okay, so moving into the next example in mythic so we've got another ring of fire game right here so i'm going to try and teach you guys what not to do in draft so again you think of who to ban they have first pick so i'm banning melody straight away surgical will ban angelo as well so we'll see how it unfolds here the enemies make a lot of bad mistakes and i actually do something that i won't recommend a lot of the time but i know in mythic that you need to pick a carry brawler especially for ring of fire and leon is that carry brawler so in terms of their first pick right here i'm expecting i don't know i'm not expecting a spike first pick so i go with a leon i know that if i can avoid the spike at least for most of the game i'm gonna have a good matchup and just the gadget alone will get me a lot of pressure it's sick beats as well so i know my opponents can't knock me back slow me you know spike slow isn't actually as good against me so i will go with the leon my opponent my teammate just picks brock for whatever reason and they just pick bell immediately even though bell isn't the greatest against leon and then they go with a dynamite so they've just gone with some crazy drafting i have no idea why they've just gone for dynamite and bell two brothers i will just absolutely rinse so i was kind of um I was just appalled by their draft overall. It doesn't even matter what we pick, to be honest. They go with Dynamite. They go with Spike. The only way that they can really win this is if they get Dynamite into our spawn. But at the same time, I can just absolutely rip through them. So in terms of how the game went, it was pretty plain sailing. And they even gave up towards the end because their draft was just absolutely terrible. This is just the drafting at this level. There's not really too much to it. Just making sure that you're not being... An idiot and picking brawlers like dynamite and cole and edgar because those brawlers are so easily countered you don't want to go dynamite unless it's a map with a lot of walls or a late pick or if there's no assassins on the opponent's side because again he's just so easily countered by any sorts of aggression we didn't even die that game it was 200 percent to zero their draft completely through it we're going to be moving on to master slash legendary drafting it's pretty much the exact same because i'm facing off against a lot of legendaries so straight away we have new horizon I know that Angelo is just so broken that I've got to make sure to ban it. Melody is only good in the right hand, so I'm not too worried about Melody too much. You can ban other snipers as well, but I think they're counterable on this map. So New Horizons, I know straight away looking at my cheat sheet that I did a couple of weeks ago, that throwers are so dominant if you don't have any type of wall break. So you want to be making sure that you've got either a thrower yourself, whether you've got a Brock or a Piper or just any type of brawler gene that can break open those walls because there's a cheesy buster strategy 
or just throws in general will just destroy you down the lane. So, wait for the opponents to first pick here. They're going to be picking Nani, which is a pretty good pick, but at the same time, it's only really good as a counter, unless you're just an insane Nani. Like, he can definitely counter for sure. So, in terms of our brawlers, we can definitely go like a brawler like Gene. My teammate goes with a Brock, which isn't the end of the world. It's not the greatest into Nani, but I know at least it means that they can't really go throwers themselves. My teammate is highlighting Meg. I know not to panic really because Meg is a good brawler into Nani. So at least we've got that going for us. The draft isn't that bad really because Meg will be facing Nani. Brock will be facing the lane. They pick a Larry, which Larry is really good, but Larry into a Brock. It's a little bit of a tough decision to make because you kind of need a thrower yourself in case, I don't know, Brock doesn't open up the walls and then I can pick a thrower and destroy them. But at the same time, Larry will often just lose against other throwers. So I'd rather just them go on like a Sprout or Tick, something like that. So I know instantly to go Sprout. They pick a Spike for no reason whatsoever. Spike is terrible into Brock. It's terrible into Sprout. So I know for sure that if I can get on the Larry and Brock goes on to Spike, we've got our matchups right here. Meg into Nani as well. This is like a perfect draft. So in terms of the gameplay, literally, I could be playing the worst game of my life and I know I'm winning this draft. This is why I've got to stress that draft is just so important to learn. So again, I know that I can beat Larry in a 1v1. Sprout's just a lot better with Hypercharge. And then Spike as well. If Spike wants to go on my lane. I fully counter him. And I'm also going to help out the mid as well. So that was just an easy draft from us. Completely outdrafted. And the draft alone just won us the game. I didn't even need to blink. And we just absolutely destroyed them. So another draft with Masters. So again, they have first pick. Want to make sure we're getting Angelo out there straight away. We should be banning Melody as well. My teammates banned Pam for whatever reason. But luckily they banned Melody themselves. So Piper is a pretty good first pick. I mean, it's definitely counterable and competitive. But if you're looking to carry in ranked, which you pretty much have to do every single time nowadays. And Piper's good. Bell into Piper isn't the greatest. Like, I mean, Bell is good into most things, but at the same time, Bell is easily counterable on this map. So I wanted to show you guys this one because, I, like, I kind of drafted pretty poorly here. So I definitely could have gone Meg against Piper. That would have been pretty good and send Bell down the lane. So I was going to go with Charlie, but the problem is with Charlie on Minecart Madness, I can get countered still easily by tanks and throwers because the Minecart will cause pressure and then tanks, throwers can push up behind unbreakable walls and Charlie just kind of struggles with that so you'll see by the end of the gameplay what really happens so yeah i'll go charlie which is okay you can never really go wrong with going charlie but this is where the teammates well the enemies draft really well so they go with a buster again buster typically not the best into charlie but on this map you can easily just push yourself forward and if they have first minecart that tank's gonna be very strong and then they go with larry as well so I mean, that is just a really good draft from them. They can just push up the map so easily. And we go with a Gene, which is a terrible, terrible choice from us. Even though the Gene didn't play too bad. Gene, when we've already got a Bell, we could have definitely gone something that could have countered them a little bit harder. So that's the draft right there. So the game overall was pretty back and forth. With some good pinches, we could stop the opponents from pushing up beyond the unbreakable walls. But when we did lose position, especially to that early minecart, only Gene could get us out of trouble because the Larry and Buster were just camping behind the walls. So that's why it's really important just to be careful of those throwers. You know, a lot of times I just ban Larry on this map anyways, but I had to ban Angelo because I didn't trust my teammates. But yeah, throwers are just really dangerous. Sprout as the last pick is dangerous on this map. So I think the draft was just entirely wrong from us. We definitely could have still won it, but they just drafted it so perfectly into us. So fair play to the enemy team. So now moving on to the last example for ranked and then we're going to be moving on to competitive because that's where things are just on a whole different ball game where I'll try and decipher what the pros are kind of thinking whilst they're drafting. So in terms of split, they have last pick. So it's always good generically. If you don't know what to ban when you have first pick and the opponents have last pick, just ban either like a good filler brawler, like typically like Spike, Amber, Cordelius, etc., or you can ban a good late pick brawler where on some maps it's really key to ban. So on split, for example, you want to be banning like a thrower typically. I don't know, like Sprout or even like an assassin like Miko who can be just really annoying on this map. So I just ban it so you don't have to worry about it too much because of course when you have first pick, you put yourself last. So you've got to worry about that whilst drafting. So Cordelius, good into everything. Really good pick from our teammate. Cordelius will be good against assassins. Cordelius will be good against throwers with a jump. And it is just really easy to keep position on this map because there's so many walls. You can just hide behind and charge your super for free. Amazing pick. So they go with Leon. Leon's pretty good overall. I won't really say it's the best pick into Cordelius, but it's okay. Spike into Cordelius is pretty good as well. But I think Spike is just so easily countered, especially on a map with a lot of walls. He's just super squishy. So I know for sure we've got this. So 
my teammate goes for booster so i know straight away that this player is good like typically when uh my teammate drafts a booster they're actually a really good support player so i'm gonna look through my draft i'm looking for any type of wall break in case uh things get a little bit sticky with the leon and it would just be great just to get a booster into the left a lot easier so uh, i realized that gray would be a fantastic option because gray is just pairs so well with tanks you see it a lot in competitive and different scenarios but in split for example if you get a good t uh, teleport from the right zone to the left zone it's going to cause a lot of pressure and i've also got the walking canes to break open them up as well whether they go with a thrower or something like that so they go with a surge they're trying to counter in the uh buster and the cordelius but i feel like surge just isn't really the best in an open scenario like this so in terms of the gameplay we actually had a really good gray game in considering we're terrible gray normally it was pretty good overall so my strategy here was just to try and group up with the buster as much as possible give him as much supercharge and then just allow that super to push him back but then charge my super as quickly as possible as well use my walking canes to break open the map and then cordelius and buster should just be able to do the work with the constant supers constant pressures and that's what happened Eventually Eventually, opponents just got overwhelmed so easily they couldn't deal with the amount of aggression and we got an easy win so that was just how that game went so now i'm going to be moving on to the competitive drafts again these guys will know a lot more to do with like the mind games that goes on with draft but this is just how i look at it as a viewer and we take a look at crazy raccoon versus angelic this is the apac finals again we'll take a look at other regions because they have different metas different drafts there's 78 brawlers in the game so there's going to be different ways so straight away they forget about the chuck and then angelic they do a perfect draft right here because they get the charlie which is the best shutdown brawler to chuck but no about charlie's just good against most things and this way it goes wrong for crazy raccoon they pick a fang into a chuck i'll explain why that is just a wrong decision and then they go with a nanny as well and then a good last pick by angelic so let's see how it plays out in game so in terms of the gameplay overall then of course good players can win with bad drafts but the main fundamentals as to why crazy raccoon losses because of course they are the better team they're literally crazy raccoon is that they picked fang so fang is a very weird choice it's a kind of a very crazy raccoon pick they like to experiment with weird things but they should have just gone with like a cordelius or a charlie themselves or just banned chuck of course i'll look back at this and realize why they should have just done that but fang just wasn't it like fang is only really good into snipers the stun's going to stop chuck in its tracks but it's not going to completely counter and then lola was a great pick from angelic as well really underrated because lola's just going to be a really hard kill even nanny are really going to struggle to kill uh the lola consistently and again fang gets no damage on the safe so they're really relying on just nanny alone to get damage on the safe here i mean fang can connect onto multiple brawlers but in the, the day chuck gets a reduced damage when he supers in and they just managed to win that comfortably so i think that was just completely the draft there that they got wrong which just goes to show that draft can win games so now we're going to be moving into eu level drafting so this is some of the best drafting you can get in the world so you want to take a look at how drafts can go really wrong unfortunately it went pretty wrong for totem and pretty much they outdrafted themselves in this series so it's a good look take a look at this from a week ago or so on the main brawl esports channel but you can see how it's going to unfold here so they pick a larry and laurie first pick it's not bell's rock it's ring of fire by the way which is pretty decent and then they go with a gale so gale into a stew and a charlie to me doesn't make too much sense the same with pearl as well like pearl is a pretty good brawler but there's no brawler there i'm saying that can sit on the zone consistently especially against a stew so the last pick of cordelius but let me break it down in the gameplay so now we have the gameplay just towards the end so the reason why i really didn't like their draft so i guess their kind of strategy here was to go with pearl break open the left side and try and outrange them but it just takes like one play from lenane or joker to really break out and cordelius is really good with that with his super you know once stew gets one super like this is such a good stew game there's two brothers he can just feed off supers all of the time and it's just about cycled aggression and totem just couldn't really deal with that so a bit of a bad draft here they also had a really bad draft in bells rock so going to show that literally draft will win your games the pros will study this so much they will scrim for hours and hours just to learn the cycling of the draft of course i don't know the exact details of how their game plan really was there probably was a lot more to it but as a viewer just looking at it i know gale and pearl just wasn't really it it's really hard to get consistent zone time with that composition so now i'm going to be moving into the final example and it's in north america this time around in the grand finals so again i could probably look at better examples but this one did sit with me quite well so center stage we have tribe gaming 2-0 up at the moment and zulan goes with a first pick charlie you can never go wrong with charlie 
Again, there's like some mind game going on with the pros where they don't ban out Charlie because she's easily countered by some certain brawlers, but at the same time, she's just good against everything. So I feel like that's definitely kind of maybe a thing people need to look at in their draft. But in terms of what Luminosity go, like I know that hindsight is a beautiful thing, but whilst even watching this, I knew myself, even as someone is not as experienced with drafting, that they did make some big errors. So the first one, they go Poco. So Poco, of course, is pretty good. Not the best as a standalone brawler right now. Pretty underrated, but they go with the Otis. So quite clearly here, they're thinking they need to counter some type of tank play that Tribe Gaming are cooking up. So as Livy, they give as Livy the Rico. And again, I'm unsure why most pros, I'm still seeing to this day, they don't ban Rico on this map. I know Rico can be countered by some type of aggression but still it's just too risky literally rico can just lock down a lane on his own so i don't know why people leave it open he's so strong on this meta and then they go with a rosa so that is pretty brave from tribe gamer but you'll see why it works out perfectly so otis isn't exactly the biggest shutdown to rosa so then unfortunately luminosity they have to double down on it because they've gone the Otis, which, like I said, just isn't that great. The Poco synergy isn't the best with Otis as well, so they've kind of shot themselves in the foot with that. And then they have to go with the Shelly to fully counter out this Rosa. But it's actually underrated against Rico as well, breaking open the map. But we'll see how it plays out in game. So the final example, like I said, the main problem was the Poco. Rosa could just straight away go on to Poco every single time. And even with the bushes, the only brawler that can fully counter Rosa it's the Shelly. So Zulan just made sure to try and get on Otis and Poco as much as possible. Rico just had a free game because there was no brawler that could compete with his range. And then Charlie as well. The pinches were there, but two of the tribe brawlers. You know, Shelly and Otis have very limited range and they're only good if they literally have full map control, which they didn't have for the majority of the time because Zulan ran free slows. So again, that's why I think the drafting went wrong. I think even last pick, you know, normally last pick, you can actually think of a good counter brawler. But I think in this scenario, it was hard to find a good counter brawler. I probably would have just gone with some aggressive pick myself, in all honesty. Just try and make Otis face off against Rosa and then maybe gone with like a Primo. I know you go up against Charlie, but at least Primo's decent into Rico. I, I don't know. It was hard. The Poco Otis synergy, I didn't really understand it too much. But again, these are the professionals. Like these guys are insane mistakes will happen in draft and there will be some strategies that tribe will leave out in their practices and they can surprise players with and that's what they did so anyways that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you enjoyed this i will try and break down even more stuff maybe uh if you guys want to see like a proper guide but this is just a quick run through some tips on how i like to draft so that's gonna be it. i hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and see you guys next time